Scotland has lost a political giant? I think he'll be remembered probably as the foremost Scottish politician of his lifetime. I see the newspapers um, describing him as a titan, and that is exactly the case. The most charismatic of communicators, and he left an indelible mark. He changed history. Let's be clear about that. Very few people who come here actually change history. A colossus of Scottish politics, Alex Salmond modernised the SNP and as First Minister he led the nation to the brink of independence. This is our opportunity of a lifetime and we must seize it with both hands. He commanded centre stage, dominating debate for years with his protégé Nicola Sturgeon. But that relationship eventually broke down with lasting implications for the two of them and the wider independence movement. Alex Salmond, born in Linlithgow in West Lothian on Hugmanay 1954, was a student activist while at St Andrews in the 1970s. In the early 80s, his membership of the left-wing 79 group saw him briefly expelled from the SNP. Alex Elliot Anderson Salmond, 19,400... Yeah! He was one of three SNP MPs elected in 1987. As a representative of Bamf and Buchan, he quickly made a name for himself at Westminster, disrupting Chancellor Nigel Lawson's budget. Alex was nothing if not combative, a disputant, itching for the fight. In a sense, the adversarial ambiance of the House of Commons suited him down to the ground. When Gordon Wilson stepped down as SNP leader in 1990, the rising star defeated the favourite, Margaret Ewing, to take the top job. This is billed as a, an acceptance speech, uh, and on reflection, I've got to tell you today, I've decided to accept. <laughs> a master campaigner, the new leader set about remoulding the party, moving it to the left and widening its appeal across many strands of Scottish life. Initially, there's no, no problem whatsoever. We were going in the same direction and we were, you know, we were twin brothers. But the more I got to know Alec, I realised, like everybody else, there's flaws. He had a wee bit of, you know, I'm the gaffer and I really don't like dissent. And that's why I decided to stand as his deputy, so that I could put salt in Alec's tail when it was required. After Labour took power in 1997, Salmond worked closely with the then Scottish Secretary Donald Dewar to campaign for the yes, yes vote in the devolution referendum. During the first ever Holyrood election, Salmond cemented his reputation as a gambler. He proposed a penny for Scotland's tax rise for education and controversially denounced NATO airstrikes against Serbia. It is an action of dubious legality but above all, one of unpardonable folly. For much of the 99 campaign, the SNP was on the back foot. The party emerged with 35 seats. In 2000, the SNP's figurehead stunned Scottish politics by quitting as leader. In the words of Hal Wilson, it's better then to, to go when they're asking why you're going. John Swinney took over, but stood down in 2004. Salmond then returns for a second, more successful time as leader, with Nicola Sturgeon as his deputy. Alex Salmond is selected as this parliament's nominee for appointment as First Minister. In 2007, he led the SNP into government for the very first time, fundamentally changing Scottish politics. A raft of popular policies were ruled out, including free prescriptions and free university tuition. His ability to st strategically solve problems in front of you and to, to look you know, one or two or three uh, months or years ahead even uh, was second to none. And uh, he was a master politician and an orator and a debater, but he was also an extremely hard working First Minister. In 2011, the SNP won an outright majority in the Scottish Parliament. I'll govern for all of the ambitions of Scotland and all the people who imagine that we can live in a better land. You take Donald Dewar. I mean, Donald's a major figure in Scottish politics. You know, the man who made it happen, he came for election. Donald couldn't get a majority because it was designed not to be so. 
Salmon got a majority. And he achieved the impossible. This paved the way for an independence referendum. Salmon's skills as a political operator led to this moment in 2012, with a British Prime Minister signing the Edinburgh Agreement, which gave Holyrood the power to hold a referendum on leaving the UK. It was a campaign which electrified the nation and saw Salmon go head to head with Alistair Darling, the leader of Better Together. A majority of people in Scotland vote against the Tory party. They have one MP, more pandas in the zoo in Edinburgh than Tory MPs in Scotland. On the 18th of September 2014, Scottish voters backed remaining in the UK by 55% to 45. Salmond resigned. For Scotland, the campaign continues and the dream shall never die. He returned to Westminster in 2015, but later lost his Gordon seat in a snap election. In the following years, the bond between the former SNP leader and his successor fractured completely. In 2018, he resigned from the SNP when allegations of sexual misconduct emerged, dating back to his time as First Minister. You know, I'm no perfect. I've made many mistakes in my life, political and personal, uh, but I am not guilty of harassing anyone and I am certainly not guilty of any criminality. He successfully took on the government he once led over the mishandling of the complaints. A judge ruled the process was tainted by apparent bias and Salmond won a judicial review. He believed his successor broke the ministerial code and was part of a conspiracy against him. The former First Minister went on trial in 2020 accused of multiple serious sexual offences. He was acquitted of all charges, but the pre-trial publicity and the evidence about his behaviour battered his reputation. His relationship with Nicola Sturgeon was never repaired. Today, in 2021, he formed the ALBA party ahead of the Holyrood election, but failed to make a breakthrough. Alex Salmond had a fatal heart attack on Saturday at a conference in North Macedonia. He died as he lived his life, making the case for independence. Well, we are grieving, we are looking after the interests of the family first and foremost, but as Alec always said, the dream shall never die and the cause of Scottish independence is still being pursued. He took what was effectively a minority interest, Scottish independence, Scottish nationalism, and made it uh, a mainstream piece of Scottish politics. Very, very few people could have done, could have done that. He was the one who did. There's a degree of damage done to Alec's reputation personally. Politically, that's impossible. This man was, this man was of the first rank.